Welcome to London's craziest gangster with me, Mr. Fish, whose motto is if angels fly and devils die, how come I'm still alive? <laughs> so today, uh, <laughs> Crash, how's your father? Today, we're going to talk about the police. A lot of people, um, you know, who are not in the game, not abiding <laughs> citizens. What they do, they tend to think that the police are all law-abiding and great and honest and brilliant at what they do. And, and I, having said that, I will say that our country does have one of the best police forces in the world, although they're not always as good as people think they are. Um, secondly, um, when it comes to police, a lot of people misunderstand police, and so I'm going to try and give you a little bit of insight from my point of view and no one else's. Number one, you have to realise uh, when you know, that the police, yeah, are the biggest gang in the world. <laughs> That's it. You have to realise, and you also have to realise that there are many, many police officers, okay, who are in prison now, serving time for crimes right across the board, murder, rape, uh, and so they are just the same as us. And as you say, it takes one to catch one. <laughs> uh, with the police, a lot of people hate them. And I, I, I never understand why. I'm always like, well, why do you hate old Bill? Like, crash, like, what, what, what have you done to hate old Bill? Yes, I know old Bill set people up. We know there's corruption. But you know what? That's in any group, any family, any kind of life. That's just business. But the police, for me, I've always copied the police. I've always followed the police. Because the police have been in control since John Peel days. Yeah? And the police are, are the best at the game. And so why not copy the best? That's why I don't watch films. One thing. I will say about this is people always um, people always um, feel that um, the police are biased or racist, and they are to a point. But you have to sidestep that and do the best you can and speak to them the best way that you can. When it came to the Stephen Lawrence case, the Lawrence family were very disappointed with the police because of the way they acted. And also with the Mensa case in North London where the young man was set alight on the fire. And their parents, his, his uh, parents and family, were very disappointed with the way the police acted. And it was only because they were very prominent um, members of the uh, of society, like his dad was a diplomat, Mr. Mensa, and the Stephen Lawrence family, as you all know, where they are today, that they persisted and kept pressure on the police and used the media to keep their cases alive until they got resolved. But it went to show you at those times that the police didn't really investigate black murders. But that was the extent that racism was in them days. And you have to remember that in the Mensa case, they, it was the first time they'd used technology to bug the uh, assailants in the end to find it, and that's what finally got them caught, and they nicked their last one in Cyprus. So when people talk about the police, to me, a lot of people don't really understand the ins and outs. When you first get arrested by the police, it's massive for people, because a lot of people don't really know how to deal with the police when they get arrested. And so, for me, it's very important, especially youngsters now, it's very important that you say no comment. And the reason I say especially youngsters now, because youngsters, they're so busy on social media, so busy doing things, even the good ones, university, but they don't really know how to answer questions. And you're found guilty not because you've done anything wrong, but because you couldn't answer the questions properly. And so in a way to, to uh, highlight what I'm saying, crash out your father, what I'm going to say. So 
if you get nicked for fighting or tearing, whatever you want to call it, yeah, they go in and they say, oh, well, yeah, he came at me and so I started fighting him back. Well, the moment you say, oh, you started fighting him back, you've already found yourself guilty. <laughs> Crap, just as mom, it's all over. You are guilty, yeah, because you've used the word fighting. Never, ever use the word fighting when you're being arrested. Always use the word defense, okay? So you say, oh, well, he came at me, uh, so I defended myself using the minimum amount of force possible, the maximum amount of force necessary in order to defend myself and those around me. Now there's not a problem because you were defending yourself. And if the guy died while you were defending yourself, so be it. Yeah? Even the police have to defend themselves. And sometimes people die when they defend themselves. <laughs> Crash, that's it. So it's important that you understand if, if you're not sure on what to say, then say no comment. Uh, because when you do sometimes think, oh, well, I haven't done nothing wrong. I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that, and say what I've done. Well, she hit me, so I hit her back, and I threw a few punches. Then all you're doing, the police will use that against you, even though it was true, and all you did try to do was defend yourself. And so you have to be very, very careful when you're speaking. Um, then again, when we have this issue of... Uh, people being shot without any guns being found, like the case we've had recently, and um, Dave Newman case, and the other case, uh, Mark Duggan case. What you have to realise with cases like this is armed police are not just trained to shoot when there's an appearance of a gun. No, no. Crash, how's your father? Crash. Armed police are trained to shoot at movement. So if you make a sudden movement, yeah, they're going to pull the trigger. Because the idea is shoot first, ask later. And in, if you look at the statistics in America of the policemen getting shot when they thought it was just a simple innocent stop, you, you know, you can't be surprised at, at, at the way they deal with things. So when it comes to um, shooting, and uh, public outcry that there was no gun found. Sometimes, what it is, the police um, crash, uh, they will know or have intelligence that you've been waving guns about or you've been using guns or you, and they have that intent but they don't have it in concrete. So then they send out basically what are hit squads. They, 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 they come to put you to bed because you know you've been causing the danger, you've been putting the public at risk, but they don't have concrete evidence, so crash they do it that way, go through the back door, which is sad, but uh, that's the way they do. It. I'm not saying the recent case uh, he was like that or he'd been waving guns or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm merely saying, um, you know, that is the way they do it. Another thing about police today, um, it's funny because we get a lot of mixed police officers now, mixed races, uh, different ethnicities, um, we get Asians, we get blacks, and uh, all, all different types are in the police now. Um, and so we always tend to think that racism has been resolved within the police force. But a uh, crash, one thing that always amazes me is whenever these black officers, Asian officers, or different ethnic minority officers leave the force, they always cry how they were subject to racist abuse and racist this and racist that from within the force. But my argument is crash. If that was the case, why didn't you say it when you was in the force, not after you've left the force, do you understand? And that's what I'm talking about being staunch, being proper. Say it when you're in the force, not when you've left, you understand? But because you was trying to, you know, promote your career, you didn't, and you said it after. Mm, to me, that always needs a bad taste in my mouth. Police, always for me, I always look at police as I find them. I don't hate police. I don't see the uniform. Very important. People see the uniform, ah, they're this, they're that, they're that. no, no, no. 
I see the person in the uniform, okay? If you, yeah, crash, yeah, a police officer stop me, yeah, if you're polite to me, I'm going to be polite to you. If you're not polite to me, I'm not going to be polite to you. Now, I remember one incident in Brixton where there was an incident on a bus. And I've said this in a podcast before, but I'm going to tell you again. I want to show you what I'm talking about here. And this guy was causing trouble on the bus with a pregnant lady. Uh, a, fight, uh, a fight started to take place. And as usual, no one intervened. And that's another thing I hate about the public. Whenever you're in trouble, why is it no one intervenes? You know, why is everyone takes out their phone and films it? Hello? Why don't you intervene and stop it? Do you understand? Yeah? So crash, I've intervened. And the bus conductor wanted to, uh, didn't want to let me stop the fight. And he didn't, he was involved in in the fight, but he didn't want to, like, finish it, let it go. So in the end, no, I'm trying to beg him, look, let go, let go, let go, let's stop. He didn't, so I mean, oh, you want to hit women, hit me, so I crashed him, and he started running around the bus. When I got further down the road, uh, by the fridge in Brixton, a police car came up and screeched us beside me, and a police officer jumped out and said, excuse me, sir, uh, there's been an incident on a bus up the road, and you matched the, the description of the guy involved. And I thought, well, I was not surprised on that. I was wearing a pink tracksuit <laughs> and a yellow, a yellow shot jacket. Not many people were wearing that crap. And so he said, uh, do you mind if I ask where you're coming from? And it was quite funny because I was on license from prison. And I just visited my mate, Mr. Andrew Burns, in prison, Brixton at the time. And so I was laughing because I thought, well, I couldn't go back here. <laughs> and so Crash House, your father. I said, well, I've just come from Brixton Prison. So he said, do you mind if I take your name? So I said, no problem. So I gave him my name. But I heard it come over the radio. Yeah, crash as your father. Careful, careful. Firearms, firearms, yeah. So I was like, laughing. So with that, he's turned around to me. And he's gone, right. Uh, it's all right to search you. And if you don't let us search you, we use force. Force, yeah? Okay. Let's use force. Crash! Let's <laughs> force, yeah? So now, he, he shit himself in the, on the radio. Right? Assistance, 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 yeah? So anyway, you know, people who know London, who understand, back in them days, Brixton was a highly volatile area. Uh, very racist uh, police, very racist police force. There was a war going on between blacks and whites, uh, uh, blacks and police officers. And so when they came, they came. Yeah. So you know, all these police officers came, they jumped out, they're all surrounding me. So now I'm the, on the speedboat and I'm like, like, let's do it, let's do it like this, yeah, and crash. And they're going, calm down, calm down, all we want to do is search you, all we want to do is search you. I said, mate, let me tell you something. He said, it's alright to search you. And if you know that, let's use force. Well, if you're going to use force, here I am, let's use force, yeah? So crash, yeah, because they come on kid, there's no point. So what's happened, as I'm like, trying to defend myself, I'm moving amongst them, what they done crash, yeah, this car has come along and the traffic lights are green, right? So, but he stopped looking at the, uh, the fight between me and the officers. So another car is now looking at it and crashed into him. So crash as your father. I went, look, you might as well search me. And the officer went, oh, look what you caused. And I went, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. You stop me, I'll never stop you. It's what you caused. So anyway, after a while, they searched me. And I said, all right, yeah, cool, thanks. He said, oh, that weren't hard, was it? I said, well, sir, nothing ever is hard. But if you're going to talk to people like that and see that you're going to use force, then let's use force. But as I walked away, I remember saying, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. So I turned around and looked back. And they all looked back at me and I went, I never carry it when I'm walking. <laughs> so yeah, you know, you have to uh, understand. You have to understand. Oh, I want to make a big shout to Anthony Murphy, another man in the game, uh, and his kids and Kel, Kelly. Yeah, Kelly Shepard, all in the game. Uh, good friend of mine, brilliant man, uh, done well. 
come from the streets, turned his life around, and that's where we are today. So Anthony, God bless to you. Crash, um, <laughs> another um, uh, incident. Uh, you know, well, please uh, always, um, you know, treat people with respect, but always have a game with you. I remember um, one time I was in the Hammersmith Palace and one of the bouncers pissed me off and so I sat there all night but at the end of the evening as I was leaving I said to the door oh, what you think you're a chap and I've got crash yeah I've hit him yeah and had I crashed him had I crashed him he's gone now all the other doors would have come but we've run out yeah but the Amazon police station just uh, next to it right? so we run out and they're trying to catch me they can't catch me but I see them pointing to the old bill that is me so they started chasing me down the road right but as most of you know I'm fit yeah so I started having it on my toes yeah crash 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 god yeah but what they've done I've gone down the King Street and they've got a van they? and they've come with a van but as they're chasing me they've got this police dog but I've tapped at the police dog with the umbrella so when the vans caught me they pulled me in this van and obviously started punching me in my face here. Yeah, what do you want for, nigga? Well, I tell you to stop, nigga, and all this in my face. But I, for me, I thought it was there, and like, at the end of the day, yeah, you took it on, ran a chase, and I got away, what's the issue? But they didn't like the fact that I stabbed, that I stabbed at the police dog. And so you always must remember, yeah, that police dogs are police officers as well. So be very careful when you go up against the plane, when you think what you're doing, the dog is just a dog, because it ain't, <laughs> yeah. So, police, gentlemen, ladies, crash has not. Always remember, especially now, we need police. And you have to understand that police are, like I said to you, they're very corrupt. And one thing I wish the police would change was the case of the Susan Everett. Uh, where the policeman raped her. For me, that case, I mean, I know it's all been sold and put under the mat now, but for me it hasn't really, because we've got a police officer here, claims were made against him in the first place. Those claims were not listened to. He then went on to do what he'd done, which we all know what he'd done. And then he went to court and that was it. And but I don't believe that should be it. I believe that when a police officer is found guilty of that crime, I believe there should be a public inquiry. And I also believe that, I also believe that all police officers that are committed of crimes should be brought to the public domain. But they don't bring it to the public domain because they feel it will dent public confidence. Do you know what I mean? But if it brought it to the public domain, at least the public be aware that the police are not as law abiding as they may seem and understand that the police are just as bad as the criminals do you understand and that is why when police do go wrong or bad people always seem confused you have to remember yeah sorry i'm in a boozer you have to remember that um you have to remember that um when they come into houses yeah you have to remember that and they take your gear and they find 15 kilos, but only two go to court. That is theft, you know what I mean? That's robbery. That's what they do, you know? They come in, they tie you up, tell you, put the guns on you, tell you not to look. That's all robbery, that's aggravated burglary. <laughs> Just license. So, yeah. You know, you have to, you know, always respect the police. But don't get me wrong. If it's time to put it on them, you have to put it on them. And I never forget the time when I was a uh, crash with a group of kids. And these are old stories, and I've been in a podcast before, but I'm just because I'm talking about the police, I'm bringing them back to you. I never, I remember the time when I was on my motorbike, and we were doing all the kids around, we were all having a laugh. And a police car came up to me, and I was all in a leather suit. Hell, uh, the bike was immaculate, just brand new. And crash out your father. The cop said, "Is that your bike?" I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he said, and I had a small number plate. 
ago, which is illegal. He said, is that your number plate? Oh yeah. He went, well, if I see you on that bike with that number plate again, yeah, I'll give you an on-the-spot £30 fine. I'm like, are you on crack? <laughs> are you on crack? <laughs> Mate, one, yeah, I said one, that is the way I brought the bike. And two, that is the way the bike is going to stay. But thirdly and more importantly, I'm doing 99 years indeterminate public protection service. Do you really think I give two fucks about on the spot for the about five? <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Come on, mate. Where do you fucking live? <laughs> <laughs> oh, people make me laugh. And uh, five minutes later, we rode behind and I saw him. And I tooted. And uh, I waved at him. I apologise about the noise. We're in a pub. Uh, so anyway, crash. Oh, how's your father? Um, sorry about the noise. They weren't out here. They've all decided to come out here. I'm famous. <laughs> no, um, I'm just a dickhead. I always call it London's craziest gangster. I always say they spelt wanker wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, I'm letting those. so anyway, crash. Always know when you're dealing with police. You respect them, they respect you. You know what I mean? I've been stopped on a Nick motorbike before by a traffic cop. Now you know, when you get near by a traffic cop, yeah, there's no way. Listen, you ain't getting out of it. You ain't getting out of it. Yeah. So crash. We was on the. Uh, I was on a Nick Mo and the police pulled me over in Hyde Park. And I uh, finally I've got a mate called Marco Don Vito. Marco, how are you? And so they said, Is that your bike? I said, No. They said, Who is it? I said, Belong to my mate Marco Don Vito. So the copper laughed at me. He said, You sure you don't belong to Danny Vito? Don Danny Vito. I started laughing. <laughs> Crash out your mom, Danny Vito. So, uh, Oh, no, listen, you're gonna laugh. You know, one thing about beating the police and playing in the game is you've always got to be brains, class, edgy. And that's funny, when you hear all these gangsters talking, I notice you never hear them talking about uh, the planning that went into the work or uh, the creativity, how you had to avoid the, 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 the cameras, how you had to avoid the skill. I mean, you never hear that. And it frustrates me because I'm a planner. I, we, we never just rush in and do anything. We always think it through. And um, one of the things I was going to say, uh, uh, where was I? I just lost a train of thought. In typical, in the middle of a podcast, <laughs> you lose a train of thought. We're only human. Um, so talk about uh, where was I? Just get up the story. That's the end. Okay, uh, we're talking about police and we're talking about planning. Well, I'll tell you now, well, yeah, great. Uh, oh, I've been stuck, lots of words. I don't know what I'm going to do. Ah, oh, what was I going to tell you? Oh no, 23 minutes. Right, I think we're going to have to end it there because I can't remember what I was going to say. Crash out of your father. I'll talk about the planning. All right, for it. I'll tell you, I'll switch it to it. All right, it's the same with the great tranny book. Yeah, the great tranny book. You know, people always laugh at the great tranny book and the police when they uh, nick me. You have to remember with uh, the police, yeah? Everything you read in the story or in the, in, in the press or on the news, you have to remember is, give, is put there by the police. And it's put there in any way the police want it to put there. So with me, they call it the great tranny robbery, gunman trips over high hills and drops gun. This was done, one, because I was in the game and I was big in the game, so they tried to make me look stupid, like, you know. Because they knew I pulled off a well-organised plan, which even the judge said. But uh, secondly, it was also there to make people look at me rather than what I had done, because they needed to make sure that the public was not aware, because it was a kept secret, hidden secret, that town halls have untold substantial amount of cash with little security guards there, and so they needed to make sure the public weren't onto that, didn't jump onto that, and then loads more town halls got here. And so they make, uh, they make it all up as they go along. And that's what they try to do to me. 
and they tried to mug me off, but what it was, they said, oh, he looked like a right mug, but I laughed, because I said to him, well, I most probably did look like a right mug, should have gone in like, suspended and a wig, you know what I mean, <laughs> thinking I looked like Naomi Gamble, <laughs> and so, but what I was trying to tell you, the creativity, yeah, you know, there were two security, two receptionists, you know, we were in the middle of three police stations, and yet the creativity that went into it was was, was phenomenal. Right? You know, we dressed as a woman. You know, initially it was supposed to be three people, three big men, but there was no way three big men were going to get to that door. And so I had to work out, well, how am I going to do that? And I'd done that by, you know, reading a book by Andy McNabb. It said only where a man could not go with the right identification papers go could a woman go crash and get away with it? The Germans wouldn't give a second one. So crash, how's your father? You know, it worked. I got through, I got past security, I got in. I got the dough and I got out. And you have to realize when I got out and my getaway driver couldn't really, there's something wrong with the bike. You have to remember, that is also a process of dealing with police. You must always do the damage limitation, yeah? Never ever put everybody in it. That's so why when Liam Ditch for those grass coming, I go, Fuck it, mate, I've done it, work with everybody. All my boys, all my boys, never grass in my life, mate. Grass be the thing. Stop it. Don't go there. Don't fucking go there, okay? And crash out as your father, yeah? Let me tell you something. Listen, that was why they put that story in the papers, okay? They asked me in a police station, to, if I would grass up my boys. And another thing I want all you kids to remember, everywhere in a police station is recorded, everywhere, even the outside. So when they take you out and say, oh, would you want to grass your boys? Or when they take you out, oh, we're off camera. We're, everywhere in a police station is recorded. So, you know, before you think about grassing, before you please believe me, you are being recorded, yeah? Let's get it right, okay? So don't do it, all right? But kids, let me explain something to you. You're not in the game, okay? So if something's happening to you, it's not grassy. It's called protecting. There are people out there who can't protect themselves. There are people out there who have to call the police, who have to afford the police the protection. And sometimes when the police can't protect you, that's when we get called. That's why we're not looking hurt. That's why we're not bullies, we're not scum, we're not dirt. We see what, yeah? We help people when they're in trouble. We take on the bullies, the scum, the dirt, the filth, the deprivation. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I'm telling you with you kids and, and parents. Listen, you're not grass if you're not in the game. Yeah? You have to call the police, protect you, call them. If it's different between saving your life and uh, your life, then please call the police. Kids, it's important you understand this. It's not grass and you're not in the game. Okay? And so. Then damage limitation came, I had to work it all out, look at the best way to do it, get myself neat in order to protect the boy. That was it, that was damage limitation. And that's another thing. Uh, when you're in the game and you are a leader and you are in charge of groups, you have to take the responsibility, do you know what I mean, of your crew. When the ship falls and sinks, yeah, you don't make it take the whole ship. Why should all six, seven, eight of you go to prison for one thing? I mean, are you crazy? One of you take the route. And then, you know, they go, oh, my mates never written to me. My mates didn't write. They don't. Listen, it's the game. When you get cut off, your pals go elsewhere. They got their life to lead. They're not great and successful. They don't mean it. It's just they're trying to do life. They're trying to get on with life. They're trying to put their own shit. And they forget about you. They don't forget about you. It's just the game yeah I'm lucky we're surrounded by loads of people we've always got friends we've got friends in prison for us it's different because when we're in prison we're, it's like we're out of prison <laughs> you understand right that was it for now I'm just going to give you a short one on the police uh, you know it's all off the cuff with me there's no script I prefer to do it that way sorry about the noise in the background I'm in a pub so remember where you heard me first remember where you saw me last don't forget to hit the button to like and subscribe to keep the show alive. And I wish all of you a great life, a great weekend. Stay safe. Take care. Ha <laughs> ha.